Hey you, Charles Angels and welcome back to Scripting with Charles and today we're going to be having a HTML crash course. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to make a much more extensive um, course but for the essence of, the, for, but for now we're just going to have a crash course and then we'll be able to move on from there. Uh, from there. Okay. If you're new to web development, I'm very sure you must have heard things like, or even if you, you don't know where to start with, with programming and you're like, okay, I want to build a website. Uh, the first thing you will need to learn is HTML. Then you will learn CSS, then you will learn JavaScript. And we're going to be starting with HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And what is hypertext markup language? If you want to imagine what hypertext markup language is, you just imagine hypertext markup language like um, the skeletal system of the human body or like the pillars and frames of, of a building. So if you look at the skeletal system, it's without the skeletal system, the human body would have no form. So if you think that, oh my God, HTML is just bleh, well, without it, websites wouldn't be and it's very very important uh, and to be sincere easy to learn if I say so myself so um, let's jump right into it and let's create our very first website for created a website the first thing we need to do is have a text editor and text editor I'm going to be using for the space of this course is brackets. Brackets is a lightweight um, text editor that was made for web developers essentially. So you could just simply google it and just say um, brackets text editor and yeah voila. You download it, install it and yeah we're good to go. So here I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call the file index.html uh the index is there a way to zoom that so html okay i'll go zoom it yeah. okay so index.html is the first file i'm creating the reason why it's index.html is because whenever your program is on a server the server is usually looking for a file named index so that's why we're naming it index.html so the first thing you want to do let's just you know let's just create our first website you just say this is the best, not beast, best website in the world. Okay, so we save and uh, let's open this in showing finder. If it is, if it is Windows, it will be showing. I think File Explorer. Yeah. So if we click on that, you can see, yeah, we created our first website. This is the best website in the world. Absolutely. Uh, just take a look at it, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I know. But of course, it can be better, and that's but but at, at least now you can see it. It's straight to the point, it's that simple to make your very first website. And um, let's say this was the early 90s, I mean, we just needed text, and voila, we have a website. But well, we're here 2024. Okay, so to start our website, what we need is, so you put a greater than sign. We need to first make a, what is called a declaration. So this is going to determine what type of um, HTML site this is. So before now, there were different types of declarations. I wouldn't want to go into that. You could simply Google it if you want. So you just say um, HTML declaration. Yep. So you could see doc type declaration. So you could just take a look at it. It used to be like this before. And so we're going to make a declaration, but a declaration with HTML5, we just need to do um, an exclamation mark. We say doc type. It's usually a capital letter, but it could be small letters as you if you don't want. As you can see, it's not case sensitive. And then you say HTML, HTML. And the next thing you want to do is you want to put a, we call, then we create a HTML tag. So greater than, and sorry, I said, did I say greater than, sorry, less than, and then you say um, HTML. 
then you close it with a greater than. So you have, this text editor will automatically complete it for you. However, what I would like to point out is that these are tags. Let me zoom in. That's not enough. Okay, this is good. So these are tags. So this is what we call the opening tag. And this is what we call the closing tag. The closing tag has the forward slash in it. So it's so it, this is very, very important. There must be an opening tag and there must be a closing tag. It's very, very important. So these are tags or some people will call it an element. So we start our website with HTML. So inside it, in the middle, so I, I'm, that I, I pressed enter, so enter again. So here I'm going to put what is called the head. So you see head. Okay, so that's the head. Then below the head, we have a body, right? Below the head, we have a body. So you have HTML, a head, and then we have a body. Absolute, absolute, absolute. So in the body is where we usually do um, a lot of what we want to do and as you can see each time I'm introducing a new tag or element I'm usually that's nested inside another one I'm usually uh, putting a tab or a space so it's usually in the body you want to put the content of your website whatever you want to build now um, the first thing I would like to, before we go into the head let's talk about the body a bit we'll go back to the head and some things but let's talk about the body a bit and let's introduce you to the very first um tag or very first element that would like say is useful sort of so the very first element that we're going to be using to create things on our website is called h1 so h1 h will stand for heading so for example if you want to think of h1 if you look at a newspaper you know how the headline is it's huge it's big it's bold so that's what h1 is here so let's just say um, newspaper title so um, if we come back here and then we refresh you can see newspaper title it's very big and it's very very bold okay um, now, another one is this H2, so H2, and let's just say subheading, and like that, yeah. So it goes down, oops, my bad, let me close that. So it goes all the way to H6, so you could try it out. Out yourself so h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 now let's go back to the head of it now if you are looking at oops if you're looking at this you can see that it's the name of the file that is up here but usually that's not what we want you can see here now you see HTML doc type declaration we usually want like the title of the page over here and that's where title um, tag comes in. So in head, you put title. And then you will give it um, best websites. Okay, so if you refresh, you can see we have best websites written there because trust me, we're about to create the best website ever. We are creating the best website ever. Okay, now. Um, Let's introduce other tags that are that we use a lot. So one tag we use a lot is the P tag. The P tag would represent the paragraph tag. This is where we just type in text. So this is a paragraph for typing text. Yeah, so if we refresh. So you can see paragraph tag or things written in paragraph are much, much smaller and they are not bold or like the header tag and yeah so and one thing to note one thing to note is that 
it doesn't matter how much space you put between elements it doesn't it's not space sensitive so if you do this and you come back it's not space sensitive it's not space sensitive at all it is not space sensitive so yeah so there are other text tags there is B um, so let's just say this is B tag so as you can see the B tag makes it bold then there is EM um, this is EM so EM is emphasis and the emphasis you when you want people to see something in a document you usually put it in italics um, italics too if you don't want to use EM you could use I um, so um, let's see I italics yeah see it's also italicized yeah uh, okay so that's for that now you can see that some elements are you know they are staying beside each other let's say you don't want them to stay beside each other you don't want the text to stay beside each other you want it to move to the next line that's where we introduce the tag called PR called it represents break so PR so let's say we want to to break these what we will do is introduce a br here so you could put it right beside it or under it anywhere you would like uh, so you do br so now br is your first self-closing tag of introducing you to you know initially i said that there could be there, there is supposed to be an opening tag and a closing closing tag but now this is what we call self-closing you don't it doesn't need opening and closing so it's called a self-closing tag. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it here. It could also be, it doesn't matter the position it is, it could be here too, it doesn't really matter. So if you save that and you refresh, you could see it's broken it from the flow. Yeah, that's it. You could also put it in the middle of a paragraph. You could just put it here to um, paste, save. You could see it would break that text. So yeah, that is it for uh, for our, uh, let, let us call them the text HTML tags. Yeah, for now. So, next we're going to talk about the A tag. Then we'll talk about absolute and relative parts. So, that's what we're going to talk about next. Now, let's introduce you to the A tag. So, the A tag um, is, is called, it's an anchor tag. We use it to navigate, it's like the primary way we navigate from our website to another website or even a part of our website to another part of our website or a page of our website to another page of our website. That's what the A tag is. So this is the A tag. Uh, so we say A, then close it. And then we type, um, I go to next place or something like that. So I did create a new file for this. Um, so I'm creating a new file. So what's kind of starting from? Yeah. So you can see I go to. I say I go to next place. Oh my god! I go to the next place. Yeah. I go to the next place. Now. It just looks like a. P tag. The power of the A tag comes with what, let me introduce you to a new thing about HTML tags. It's called an attribute. It, we would we'll describe an attribute to be things that make and gives a feature to a particular tag. So now for the attribute we're going to be using here, we'll call it href. So that's the, what we're using here. So now our href would determine what, where we are going to, Without this, the A tag is just another um, P tag. Now, different tags would have different attributes for the tags. There are some attributes that are global, and there are some attributes that are specifically for tags. 
you don't need to worry too much about them because as time will go on in your web development path or web development career, then you'll be able to move, you'll be able to know more of these attributes. There are a lot, there are tons of attributes and we wouldn't be able to cover them all because to be sincere, we don't use all of them. <laughs> okay, um, your day to, when I mean we don't use all of them, you're like day to day um, web development, yeah. Okay, so now for a href, there, to use this href, we have what is called the absolute path, and we have what is called the relative path. Now, the absolute path is usually an external URL, a URL from another website. So let's just use one. So we'll just say google, google.com, google, sorry, google.com. All right. So I'm just going to copy this. And then, then I'll just paste it here. So https www.google.com. Okay, good. So now, if let's go back to the best website. If I refresh, you can see I go to the next place. So if you click on this, it goes to Google. If you click on it, it goes to Google. That, so that's what it does. Now, apart from that, there is what we call the relative path. The relative path. The relative path. Now, this is relative to the documents. Like, it's usually like you're trying to get another, just imagine the relative path, like you're trying to get another document from your website. Uh, you're trying to go to another HTML document from your website, or you're trying to get another file from your from the folder you're in, in your website, <coughs> or on your local machine. Excuse me. <coughs> so how do we do that? You do dot slash. Dot slash means that I am in the same folder. That's what dot slash means. I am in the same folder. If you do dot dot slash, you're trying to go to a folder that is above this one, like a parent folder. But yeah, so you see dot dot slash, you can see I have all this that is a parent to this particular folder. So, so dot slash, as you can see, this is the file, these are the files in this folder. So you can see the and this and you can see index. So we want to go to the index.html. So we just click on that. Now, if I'm going go to index. So if I refresh, if I click on this, you can see it goes to the index.html. Where you mm -hmm. then let's go back. So yeah, so that's how we make use of the a tag. In as much as we are making use of the a tag, um, there are parts of there are other attributes of the a tag that are very very important because as you can see, what the way we are moving through our website is each time we click on the link, it's it goes to the same page. So like it opens in the same page. You may not want that. You may want to open it on another page. Right, you know, decide to open it on another page. So let me introduce you to another attribute. And so the name of this attribute, oops, that's too much. So the name of the attribute is, I'm trying to put this on another line. Okay, so that's clean, uh, whatever. So the name of the attribute is, um, it's called the target attribute. So see, it's already giving us the options. So you can see there is blank, there is parent, there is self, and there is and there is top. So I'm going to be talking more about blank. So blank help would give your would so for blank, whenever you click on the a tag, it takes you outside the present tab you're in and opens a new tab. So we are going to refresh this and we click on it. You can see it opens a new tab. 
for us. So that's what blank does. Yeah. Now, um, the next, so with this, we've been able to talk about both the relative path and absolute path. So absolute path is you just paste the URL. Relative path is relative to the content of your local machine or yeah, or of your laptop, if you think about it like that. Yeah, so that is absolute and that's relative part. So um, next we're going to talk about lists. Lists, we're going to talk about lists because they are pretty much interesting. 